What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, well, we've got new Digimon cards to talk about. It would seem very much like we have entered the daily reveals part of the Digimon TCG cycle. So it seems like for at least the next couple of weeks, we're going to have new Digimon cards pretty much every day. And that makes me a rather delighted fellow indeed. So what have we got today? Well, we've actually got ourselves a couple of Digimon we haven't seen before. Although people that are more ingrained in the Digimon lore than I, although I'm getting there, I will get there, will have known these were coming because they are, of course, lower forms of Valkyriemon. And we've already seen that Valkyriemon is very much coming. So how lovely is that? I say that someone on the Facebook group told me they're lower forms of Valkyriemon. And you know what? I am going to go ahead and believe them. So first of all, we've got Hawkmon then. And I mean, Hawkmon is a vanilla level 3 Digimon. There are no skills here. No skills before you evolve. No inheritable skills when you evolve. And the deal basically is if we've got no inheritable skills, no actual skills, we are just looking at the stats. So then we basically say, well, all right. How are the stats looking? And the stats are looking okay. We've got a free cost to play normally, which is kind of standard for a level 3. Zero cost to evolve, which is kind of, well, it's, it's what the vast majority of level 3s have. And 4,000 power, which is on the higher end of level 3s. But the fact of the matter is, we've got Dracomon in the starter decks, and th this is Dracomon. Like, this is a red level 3 Digimon, free cost to play normally, zero cost to evolve, 4,000 power. This is literally exactly the same as Dracomon, except for the name. Now, the name might end up actually becoming relevant, because there might be cards which, if you've got Hawkmon, or if you're in this evolution line, or whatever, they could genuinely be kind of relevant. But, as it stands at the moment... There's no reason to play this over Dracomon, but then there's no reason to really play Dracomon over this. If you want to play this normally without evolving, you're better off playing Moochomon, because Moochomon is a 5,000 power free cost to play normally, so I suppose that's kind of cool. If you want to evolve for zero cost, you're better off with Vorvamon, because although it's a 4 cost to play normally, if you evolve, it's got 5,000 power. So the fact of the matter is, we've got a Digimon with the exact same stats. We've got a Digimon that, if you evolve, is the same cost but more powerful. And we've got a Digimon that, if you play normally, is the same cost but more powerful. And this is only going to become more of a thing as we see more vanilla Digimon. Because when you're not differentiating Digimon through skills... There's so much less you can do to differentiate them. So you do end up in this weird kind of situation where, you know what? Yeah, they're, they're basically the same kind of cards. But that's all right. You can either go for the one you've already had and play this over Dracomon because it's clearly far more adorable. Or you can go for one of the others, which is more expensive in one way but not the other. And just make sure you only play it in that way. It's not a bad card. But it's also not a good card. I suppose it's just kind of there. If that doesn't sound a little bit rude. But we've got a card that does have a skill. And that makes us a little bit more excited. Now our translation today comes from the wonderful DTCG review over on Twitter. We thank them in a bunch of videos. I expect that to keep going. If you're not following them on Twitter but you like the Digimon TCG. Might be something you want to fix in the near future. And what we've got is Aquilamon. Or something kind of like it. And we've got a level 4 Digimon, and we've got 6 cost to play normally, which for a level 4 is on the higher end, if I'm honest with you. 6 cost for a level 4 is actually kind of expensive. There were no level 4s in the starter deck that cost 6, in, in terms of the red starter deck, so that's kind of expensive. And over in New Evolution... There was only one level 4 that cost 6. And that was the 6,000 power Dark Tyrannomon, which is super chonky and powerful. 
And then there were no six cost level fours in Ultimate Power. So actually, this is a really expensive card. Like, as far as it goes, for a level 4, this is very expensive. 2 cost to evolve is very, very standard, and 5,000 power is on the higher end. It's not as high as we saw on Dark Tyrannomon. But then again, that's not really a fair comparison, because Dark Tyrannomon was a vanilla card. This one has a skill, and the skill says, according to DTC to review, who have been very good at this, it's got an inheritable skill whereby when you attack, you get to destroy one of your opponent's Digimon with 2,000 power or less. And this is a weird kind of skill, right? Because on the one hand, being able to attack and automatically destroy a Digimon is good. Because you're essentially destroying a Digimon while attacking and hopefully taking out a security. It, it, it's kind of like pseudo-piercing. It's not. It's not piercing. But you are still taking out a Digimon while also taking out a security. So it's not a million miles away. And it is very much worth pointing out that because you're destroying a Digimon, they can be active. Generally speaking, you can only attack resting Digimon, so if they're active, they're very, very hard to take out. But this can just flat out destroy an active 2,000 power Digimon. That's kind of ridiculous. The issue I have with this card, how many 2,000 power Digimon are there? And this doesn't need to be some kind of rhetorical question. We can literally count. In New Evolution, the first expansion, there were 13 Digimon that had 1 or 2,000 power. In Ultimate Power, there were 10 Digimon that had 2,000 or less power. They're very few and far between. The thing is, some of them are very, very good. But then again, I mean, if we go purple as an example, two of the ones which I do imagine we'll see a fair amount of play, and I've seen popping up in decks, are Gabumon and Tapermon, and they have 2,000 power. And they could end up being destroyed by this. But Tapermon is played because when it's destroyed, you draw a card, so maybe not the best use of your skill. And Gabumon, now to be fair, it is an inheritable skill when destroyed, draw two, and then discard a card from your hand. So if you can catch it before it evolves, that actually will be a great advantage, because you'll take out a Digimon and you'll also stop them using that power because they haven't had a chance to evolve and ha 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 ha, ha 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 ha. So okay, that could work. And there are a few of the weaker ones we see lying around. There are a bunch that we do see coming. But there's too many of them that have good destroyed attacks. Salomon, when destroyed, if your security is free or less, recover one. Now, let's be clear. I am not always saying that the weaker Digimon have good destroyed effects. That would be silly. But I am saying that there are a bunch that do. And that's going to kind of suck. And again, the translation we've got here is destroy, not you may destroy. So if the only one sitting there to be destroyed has a destroyed skill, then that doesn't actually work. And that's a bit of a problem. I mean, it works. It, it, it helps your opponent and not yourself. So... I like this. I think it's a really nice skill. But it's a Digimon you've got to evolve because six cost to play normally is too expensive. And it's a skill... It's a really weird one, right? This is a metagame call. This is a kind of Digimon where you look to see what other people are playing. You pour over deck lists to try and decide what the, what the big decks are and what the standard builds of them are. And the rule is fairly simple. If 1 and 2,000 power Digimon are kind of prevalent and a lot of people are playing them, this becomes an awesome card. If they're not, this doesn't. There are some great uses for this. I mean, the one that jumped to me straight off the bat was Monmon. Monmon is a 1,000 power blocker, but the fact of the matter is, it is a blocker, and it can kind of ruin one of your attacks. So you take this out, your opponent loses their weak blocker, and that's kind of brilliant and hilarious. And, I mean, it's definitely a win for you, and I'm a big fan. But there are going to be a lot of decks that are not really playing 1 and 2,000 power Digimon. There are going to be a lot of those 1 and 2,000 power Digimon that have good destroyed skills. And you've also got to remember, it's up to your opponent. If your opponent knows you're playing this, and bearing in mind it's an inheritable skill, so you kind of got to telegraph it a little bit, 
especially because of the whole summoning sickness, not being able to use it the turn it comes in, etc. The point I'm making here is that if your opponent is really terrified, they can just make sure they don't play that 2,000 power Digimon until they can evolve it. And then they play and immediately evolve it. And then you don't get to use a skill. And because it's metagame dependent and because there are good destroyed skills and because it can be played around, I don't know how much of a fan of this I am. I certainly don't look at this and go right off the bat, you know what, I have got to get that in a deck as fast as I possibly can. This strikes me as one of those where I can see it being used. I can see people rocking up to a tournament where people are unprepared and having a really good day with it. But I don't think this is going to be some kind of staple card that completely takes over the meta. The good news is, of course, that this game is so new and so woefully undertested because of its newness, not because of any other reason. Well, at that and tournaments aren't running at the moment. Boo, etc. Not really. The We don't know that much about what the metagame is and what the metagame is going to look like in the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wonderful, wonderful thing indeed. Of course, it should be pointed out that this second skill does obviously combo beautifully with Valkyriemon here, who's got that skill that when you evolve and when you attack, you destroy an opponent's Digimon with 4,000 power or less. Imagine if you evolved up from here, and then you get to destroy a 4,000 and a 2,000 when you attack. And we haven't seen the level 5. Maybe the level 5 lets you destroy a 3,000. Because then the level 4 would get a 2,000. The level 5 would get a 3,000. And the level 6 would get a 4,000. That could work. We haven't seen the level 5. That is pure speculation on my part. But that is, I think, the real best use for it. If you can essentially just be wrecking decks. And if you're against Rookie Rush and you're able to take out multiple little Digimon all at the same time... Well, that would make a pretty big difference now, ladies and gentlemen, wouldn't it? But now I want to hear about you guys and what you think about these cards. So let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.